Hello, I'm Denise LaFrance coming up on this edition of City Beat. The Parks and Recreation Department is making it easier to register for upcoming programs and activities. We'll show you how. Seniors are a fun and active group in our community. A look into some activities that senior programs provide. Downtown parking has become a topic of discussion for city council members. We'll show you some findings from a video survey and drivers work on the downtown two-way conversion is about to begin. Don't be out of the loop. How you can get more information on the changes that are coming. Welcome to City Beat for the month of June. Parks and Recreation has a new tool to help you register your kids for programs and activities. It's called eTrack and it allows you to be more flexible in registering. CLC TV's Jennifer Martinez learned all about it and can help you become familiar. In Las Cruces, there are plenty of activities for children to take part in. It may be a basketball league, an after-school program, or a specialty camp. Bethel, 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 Bethel. Chances are, if you have recently signed up your child for one of these programs, city staff has used the E-Track program to sign you up. It's what we use anytime someone comes to the aquatic center to use the weight room or swim in the pool, or someone comes in and they want to rent a section at Young Park for a birthday party, they have used E-Track. Parks and Rec has been using this program since the fall of 2015. If you would like to sign up for available programs, Parks and Recreation staff are making it easier for you to access this program from home with just a little information to plug in. We need a name, um, we need a birth date, we need an address, an email address and phone number. Email address is very important as well as the name. And then you're going to create a, a login ID and a password very similar to if you've ever created a username and password for um, any like social media or any online account. To get eTrack online, go to the city's webpage, loss-cruces.org. Click on play to find online registration. Parents who have already signed up say it really saves time. Um, it's new to me. Um, I've used it for the first time to register him for the youth basketball uh, baseball league this year. Um, it was very easy, efficient, um, well organized on there, easy to navigate through. Um, so I think it's great. Sanchez says the process is simple and her kiddo is now ready for baseball, which begins in July. Um, it took me about between five to 10 minutes to get on there, find what I was looking for, enter his information in that I needed to, put my debit card information in and we were good to go. It's allowing the convenience and I think bringing in, um, continuing to bring Parks and Rec to the people, not necessarily that you have to come down to the Hadley complex. And if you have signed up for programs at the Parks and Recreation building on Hadley before using eTrack online, it may show you already have an active account. You can ask to reset your password online. For City Beat, I'm Jennifer Martinez. Thank you, Jen. Right now, only a handful of programs are being offered on the service. Park staff are happy to help you learn the eTrack system. For more information, you can call 541-2550. Senior Programs is doing its part to give Las Cruces seniors an opportunity to mingle with others. A Mother's Day, Father's Day dance was held at the Munson Senior Center in May. Here's a look at all the fun. So today at the Munson Center, we have uh, one of our dances happening. We have dances every single month uh, for folks uh, that are 15 over. Uh, whoever wants to participate, they can come to the Munson Center dance, uh, and it's $3 per person. It's every third Thursday of the month from 2 to 4. Well, everybody is able to get out and come and enjoy themselves. It gives people a chance to be together and meet people and just have a lot of fun. Well, as we get older, uh, seniors tend not to do a lot of exercise. This way, you exercise and it's fun. Don't believe me, just watch. 
there's usually anywhere from 80, uh, 60 to 80 people that attend. And they have all sorts of uh, prizes, door prizes that they give, and they play the chicken dance and the limbo rock and all sorts of other fun dances that everybody just really enjoys. Well, I think one of the reasons it's important is because uh, I think we have this idea in our mind that, that when you retire, that you don't do much of anything. And that's certainly not what we see happening when we have people come to our dances every month. Um, people have a lot of fun. They get up there and dance. They do any, anything from the chicken dance to the limbo to getting out there for La Bamba. And so they get a lot of a variety of different kinds of music. People have a lot of fun. We just want everybody to come out and enjoy it and enjoy it and have fun and I think they'd love it if they come. Senior programs activities take place at Munson Center on Mesquite Street, the Eastside Community Center on Tornillo Street, Frank O'Brien Papin Center on West Bell, Henry Benavides Community Center on McClure, and at Sage Cafe on Reynolds Drive. For more information on programming, you can call 528-3017. The City of Las Cruces has a new tool to help you charge up your phones or tablets while downtown. Several SUFA solar benches were installed along Main Street. The benches use solar power to charge phones and they also help the city to measure the growing popularity of the downtown area. It's just another way the city is encouraging sustainability and traffic to our downtown. If you're planning on visiting for the farmer's market, remember in the summer there are evening hours on certain Wednesdays. The summer hours take place the second Wednesday evening of each month downtown, except for the October date, which is the last Wednesday on the 25th. Hours are from 6 to 10 p.m. in July and August and back to 5 to 9 p.m. in September and October. When you do head downtown, where do you find yourself parking? City staff have found that the City Hall and Brannigan Library parking lots are underutilized for downtown area events. Here's what you should know. Is there enough parking downtown? This question was asked on the city's Facebook page and got mixed responses. One person writes, this town could use a multi-level parking garage. But another says he's never had a problem. This was also the topic of discussion at a city council work session this past May. What a wonderful problem to have and to be futuring about. I mean, it is absolutely sensational. In 2012, a study called the Walker Parking Study showed that the available 2,000 plus parking spaces in downtown Las Cruces was sufficient. In May 2017, the city of Las Cruces conducted another study. Our public information office just did a video. It was during the farmer's market on a Saturday. It was kind of an aerial survey of all of the public parking so that we could see a snapshot in time of what the parking usage was. The aerial survey looked at all public parking areas in downtown. Though parking was near or at 100% in the center of downtown, there were many available parking spots only a block or two away. In the video you can see there's different uh, parking lots that are used at different percentages and so there's some that are very underutilized like district court parking, um, some of the area behind American Linen, um, the area in the south of downtown near White's Music. It's so um, easy to see uh, that you have uh, all these parking places that aren't being used and uh, people need to know they can use them. And the city did just that. So we recently put up signs at City Hall to remind people that this is also public parking that's available to them uh, during the weekends when, or when the farmer's market's going on and also during the week if there's something that they need to get to downtown. It's disingenuous to sit here today and say you have a parking problem, but it is 
as far as spots like in the Instacopy parking lot that people get used to parking at the front door. They just do. It's a good thing if people have to walk a block or two. Though the two studies showed there was already enough parking downtown, the city will continue to monitor this situation. So following a work session with city council, uh, we're going to continue to monitor the parking. Uh, we're going to put in a, a plan to monitor on a regular basis so that we can see as things change as there are different developments downtown. And then city council has also asked us to look at ask staff to provide a recommendation to create a commission to look at parking downtown issues as a whole. The city installed the signs in the City Hall and Brannigan lots in mid-May. To view the entire aerial video, visit the city's YouTube channel. Movies in the Park began last month with Moana and The Jungle Book. This month, The Secret Life of Pets and Pete's Dragon. Here's what you can expect in July. On July 15th is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and on the 29th is Alice Through the Looking Glass. Movies are at Young Park at dusk. For more information on movies in August and September, go to las-cruces.org slash special-events. Music in the Park is also back at Young Park. July performances include Squib Cakes and Billy Towns on the 9th, Windy City and Roger Ortega on the 16th, Fat Soul and Caliente on the 23rd, and The Deltas and Steve Smith and Hard Road on the 30th. This year's music series takes place at Young Park at 7 p.m. each Sunday. The city's electric light parade and 4th of July celebration are around the corner. Details ahead in our City Minute. The Las Cruces Firefighters Union 2362 is hosting Battle of the Badges, a boxing event putting the finest versus the bravest in the ring. Public safety personnel from around the state have entered into three one-minute round bouts. Proceeds go to different charities. The event takes place June 17th at the Las Cruces Convention Center. Cost is $20 each. On July 3rd, the electric 5K fun run begins at 7.45 p.m. at Mearsheit Recreation Center. And get your float ready for the city's electric light parade. The theme is Celebrate Freedom, Our Patriots, and America. The parade runs from Apodaca Park to Mag Park via Solano Drive. The deadline to enter a float is June 23rd at 4 p.m. Get entry packets at 1501 East Hadley Avenue. The fun continues during the city's July 4th celebration featuring the Blue Oyster Cult, the Gap Experience, the Air National Guard Band of the Southwest, and Play Me, a tribute to the music of Neil Diamond. The Las Cruces downtown area will undergo more changes as the church and Water Street one-ways become two-way traffic. The transition will occur in phases as downtown coordinator Andy Hume explains to host Udell Vigil in this month's Ask the. Hello and welcome. Our guest for this edition of ASTA is Andy Hume, Downtown Coordinator for the City of Las Cruces. Andy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, what are the benefits to having two-way traffic in downtown Las Cruces? Uh, there are several benefits. One is that it helps calm traffic. Uh, right now, we find that traffic moves pretty quickly through downtown, hence sometimes the term we use is the racetrack. Um, another benefit is that when it calms traffic, it makes it a much better pedestrian environment. Uh, it makes it much easier for people to come to and from downtown, from the neighboring, uh, from the neighborhoods, and uh, that really is beneficial. And I think the last thing, and most importantly for our business community, is it provides better access and visibility to our businesses downtown. We know that the project's going to take about a year and a half to complete, but it is going to be in a phased approach, right? That's correct. There's going to be nearly uh, 24 phases to this project. And we really wanted to make sure that not all of downtown was uh, under construction at the same time. Smart. Now, City Council extended work hours for the project. Tell us how that's going to work. Well, especially in the summer months, it's very difficult to do construction work of this type. Uh, it's very labor intensive and of course with the heat that we have, it's much better to have some hours in the cooler part of the morning and perhaps the cooler part of the evening to extend those hours. Plus we're on some very tight time frames and so we want to make sure that we get the project done and moved along as we need it. So what will those hours be? Uh, the hours were extended from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, very good. Now we want to uh, 
reassure the community that businesses will be open downtown and yep. that they will be easily accessible, correct? Absolutely correct. Uh, one of the things that we've done with that phased approach is make sure that at least one uh, uh, lane on Church and Water is open at all times during the construction process. That will provide access to the parking lots and to the front doors of our businesses. And will be, there be signage directing uh, customers to those businesses? We have, we have budgeted for enhanced signage so that people can very, be very clearly indicated where those parking lots are for those businesses and also provide good access for the farmers and crafts market. Okay, very good. And where can people get more information about the project to stay on top of it as it progresses? Um, we have actually, we're, pr we're producing a very uh, robust communication process. The very first place is go to our homepage and down near the bottom under construction projects, you'll see a pop-up for Church and Water. Please like the city on Facebook. You can follow our progress on Facebook as well. And if you send us an email to downtown at lost-cruces.org, you can request to be put on our mailing our email list. Oh, that's very convenient. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, Andy Hume, downtown coordinator with the city of Las Cruces, thank you for joining us. Appreciate on it. Thank you. Thanks, Udell. Remember, you can get updated on the city's work on the downtown conversion by heading to our website, lost-cruces.org, and scrolling to the section labeled Construction Projects. If you would like to be informed of the downtown work via email, join the stakeholder list by emailing your information to downtown at lost-cruces.org. That's all for this episode of City Beat. Remember to tune in for live city council meetings right here Mondays at 1 p.m. You can also find all archived meetings and programs on clctv.com. Plus, we have so much more on our Facebook page. Thanks for joining us. I'm Denise LaFrance.